And thanks for the activism that Real Change is leading and the Chair Wheel is leading. This is really, really necessary work and I'm so glad that you're doing it. Um, like Tim said, I'm with the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance. We're a statewide advocacy group and we work mostly at the state and federal level. Um, we became much more involved in advocacy to end homelessness um, but last fall when we merged or joined forces with our statewide homeless coalition. So we've taken on homelessness in a new way in the last six months or the last nine months or so. Our take on homelessness seems really obvious to me. Um, it's that homelessness is primarily, fundamentally about housing. Um, it seems obvious but it's surprising how often we have to say that to people. Most people, me included, probably everybody here has some issues and challenges in our life, but the reason that anybody, regardless of what issues and challenges they have, the only reason, the reason that they become homeless is because they have less money available than it costs to keep a roof over their head. It's about wages and jobs and the expensiveness of housing that's available. Um, so the way to solve that, the biggest thing we can do to solve that is to close the gap between how much it costs and how much money people have. Um, you heard the last speaker talk about living wage jobs and anybody who cares about ending homelessness has to be working in solidarity with people who are trying to improve and in increase family wage jobs. Um, there are some other really specific ways. The way that we work on ending homelessness is to increase the supply of housing that's affordable to people who are very low income. And I just want to tell you about a couple of campaigns that are going on, um, hoping that you may want to get involved in some of them at some point, or that at least after you're done telling your story to the Committee to End Homelessness tomorrow, you'll think about telling <laughs> legislators, state legislators, federal legislators, and city council members how much we need affordable housing in the future. Um, and keep in mind that it's an election year and it's election season right now, so they're listening and they have to be paying attention to constituents right now. It's a good time to tell them this. Um, in some ways, we've been making some incremental progress on increasing affordable housing, but it's been incremental, it's been very slow. We've been adding to the affordable housing stock in Washington every year, not anywhere near what we need. We have a great tool, it's called the State Housing Trust Fund. If we fund that to the extent that we need, we'll be able to make significant progress on making sure that everybody has an opportunity to an affordable home. Um, we need state legislators to hear from people like you how important affordable housing is, how important the Housing Trust Fund is, and we need them to hear that we need to fund it at an adequate level, not this little incremental change that we have to go back and fight for, the crumbs that we have to fight for every year. That's one thing. Another thing is that we need to reduce the barriers to affordable housing for people who can afford it but just have really ridiculous unnecessary barriers in the way. One of the ways we're working on that is to pass the Fair Tenant Screening Act. Um, I know that many of you here are probably renters and those of you who aren't have probably been renters recently so you may remember or may have experience with having to pay anywhere between 40 and 60 dollars to apply to get into rental housing. If you have to apply to more than one place you have to pay that over and over and over again. We think you should only have to pay it one time. It doesn't cost them any more to run the report more than once. So we're trying to change that. We also think that if you were taken to court for an eviction or if you're a domestic violence survivor and you've taken out a protection order, those things should not show up on your tenant screening report. Your potential landlord should not have the right to know that and to discriminate against you based on those things. So we're trying to change that with the Fair Tenant Screening Act. Um, and lastly, this is a national level issue, but it's so exciting. It's going to be a huge lift. It's going to take us probably multiple years to pass. Um, but I want everybody to start thinking about this. There's a bill that's about to be introduced by a legislator, a congressman in Minnesota, Keith. He's planning to introduce a bill to overhaul the mortgage interest tax deduction. This is the biggest housing program we have in this country, and the largest majority of the money goes to housing for people who are middle class and wealthy and own expensive homes. They get these tax breaks on their mortgage interest. If we reform that, his bill would reform that, it would cap it so that the people who earn the most money, the 1%, don't get to take that big tax break. They would make it more accessible to lower income and moderate income homeowners. And we would use that money to build more affordable housing for people who are homeless and people who are extremely poor. That's one of the things that we need to be talking about. For many years, it's been a sacred cow. It's not anymore. People are talking about it like we might be able to do this. We need everybody talking about reforming the mortgage interest tax deduction. I probably exceeded my three minutes. Thank you.